31, welcome to section 9.4. We're going to take a look at series and their notations. So take note that we have a different S word here. We no longer have sequence. Right? We've been looking at sequences in 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3. And if you remember, if I, if I was going to ask you about a sequence, it's a list of numbers separated by commas. All right, this, this sequence I, I wrote out here happens to be an arithmetic sequence. But in, in the sections of 9, 1 and 9 through 9, 3, we looked at sequences. Again, lists of numbers separated by commas. We looked at arithmetic sequences, both explicitly and recursively. We looked at geometric sequences, explicitly and recursively. And in 9, 1, we actually looked at just sequences in general. In 9, 2 and 9, 3, we really we honed in on arithmetic and geometric. And we're going to bump up in 9, 4 to something called a series. And the difference between a sequence and a series, well in a sequence, again, we're making a list of numbers, right? but in a series we're adding those numbers together. So a series will be something along the lines of 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, and that can keep on going. All right, so that's what a series is. A series is when you add the terms of your sequence. And we can opt, and, and we'll do this in just a bit, we might opt to only add the first two terms in the sequence, we might add the first three terms in a sequence, we might add the first four, five terms in a sequence. It depends on how long or how large we want our series to be, and it also just depends on what the directions say. So before we get into all of this, the arithmetic series and the geometric series, we gotta talk about summation notation. Then I will give you two formulas, actually, that I'll talk about the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series. I'll give you another formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series. And then I'll talk about how to sum an infinite geometric series. So you might hear these first two referred to as finite series. All right, meaning we're adding, like I mentioned before, maybe we add just the first two terms. Maybe we add the first three terms, the first four terms of an arithmetic or geometric series, but it's a finite number of terms, so the first n terms. And then when we get later on in this section, I will show you how you are able to add an infinite number of terms, and there's a formula governing that. Right? It's bounded by a number in some cases. And last but not least, we'll solve an annuity problem. All right, so with that, the first thing we gotta get you through is summation notation. So the sum of the first n terms of a series can be expressed in summation notation as follows. So you're gonna see this symbol, the capital E looking thing, but that's really capital S in the Greek alphabet. So that symbol, which if you wanna call it by its letter, it's sigma, capital sigma in the Greek alphabet, but it means sum. So add up the first term through the nth term of a sub k, whatever that kth term in your sequence is. So I want you to imagine you had a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way up to a sub n. And I asked you to add, or I should say, we'll call this some other subscript, we'll call it a sub i, I don't know, just pick a different letter than n because it was going to get used here. I want you to add up the first n terms. So maybe I want n to be 4 and I want you to add up the first 4 terms. Maybe I want n to be 3 and you only add up the first three terms. Maybe I want n to be seven, and you add up seven terms. All right? And actually, if I want to be consistent, I just realized I put this as a sub k here, so I, I, I can put that. That's what I should be working with. All right. Okay, so this notation tells, tells us to find the sum of a sub k from k equaling one to n. All right, k is called the index of summation, one is the lower limit of the summation, and n is the upper limit of the summation. And it looks worse in general form than it is when we actually go play it out. So, so we're, we're gonna play it out right now. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna scooch this up just a bit. All right, there we go. So let's take a look at this. Now, again, I'm not using k in the, oh, I'm pointing to the wrong thing. I'm not using k here, I'm using i. It doesn't matter what your letter, your index, of summation is called. Just whatever letter is popping out here, you'll see it pop out here. That's why up above you saw me write a sub i, because we, we use i's and k's all the time for the index of summation. All right, so here we go. 
we want to add from i equaling 5 to i equaling 12, right? So I'm going to jump by whole numbers. I'm going to go i equaling 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I want to add these terms. I want to add 5i minus 10 and see what that adds up to in general. So let's think about this as a sequence first of all, and then we'll, we'll build up to a series. So let me just go ahead and put some, I'll put some separators here just so we can work this. If we were looking at i equaling 5, all right, if I want the i or the a sub fifth term, the fifth term in the sequence, this would be 5 times 5 minus 10, which would be equal, well, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 minus 10 is 15. Okay, let's think about this when i is equal to 6. All right, and the reason I'm starting at 5 is because I was directed to, and I'm bumping to 6 because I have to get all the way to 12. That's what this index of summation, or I'm oh, sorry, that's what this summation is telling me to, to do. Lower limit of summation is 5, upper limit of summation is 12. So as we start to plug these in, we'll have here 5 times 6 minus 10, because again, I'm substituting in 6 for i. So this would be 30 minus 10, which is 20. I gotta keep going. All right, and give me a moment to write all of these out. It's gonna take a little bit. All right, so there we have it. If we can't see it all, let me actually just move this up a bit so that we have it all in view. All right, so did we get all of that in view? Yeah, we're all in view now. Okay, so you've seen me now go ahead and list out the terms in my sequence, right? So I have 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way up to 50. But what this symbol is telling us to do, it's saying, well, it's not enough that you found those terms. I would like you to add those terms together. So that's what a series is doing. It's saying, hey, take this arithmetic sequence, and again, imagine the sequence if I just wrote it, right? 15, comma 20, comma 25, all the way up to 50. There's my sequence, and I would like you to add those terms. So we're gonna take a sub five plus a sub six plus a sub seven all the way up to a sub 12 and we're gonna add those. So I'm gonna do 15 plus 20 plus 25, and then we'll add all of these. So give me a moment to write that out. So, oops, I already wrote 25. We'll do plus 30. Um, I have to go up to 50, so plus 30, plus 35, plus 40, plus 45, plus 50. So let's take a moment, go to our calculator, see if we got this. So let me clear this out. We've got 15 plus 20 plus 25 plus 30, 35, 40, 45, and finally 50. It looks like we're getting to 260. All right, so even though it took us a little while, that is the answer to this question. I could literally draw the equal sign and put 260. So if I add up all the terms in my sequence from when i was equal to 5, which gave me i sub 5, or a sub 5 being 15, and I go to the 12th term in that sequence, which would have given me 50. If I add up all of these numbers in here, that would total out to 260. And that's all a series is. It's adding the terms of a sequence. All right, so with that, let's try a little bit different. Now I'm, gonna do, I'm looking at a, an index of summation. I'm back to my k's, and you see the k here. Now I'm not going to write all of this out. I'm, I'm going to try and be a little bit more efficient. If k is equal to 5, this is going to be 8 minus 2 times 5. I would like to add to it the next term in my sequence that corresponds to when k is 6, because I need to do k equaling 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so if k was 6, this is going to be 8 minus 2 times 6. If k is 7, we're going to have 8 minus 2 times 7. If k is 8, I'm going to be 8 minus 2 times 8, not 2.8. Um, we got to go to 9. And I still got to go up to 10. 
All right. So again, this number is telling you where to start. This number is telling you where to finish. And this is the expression you plug that K value into. Those are going to give you the terms of your sequence that you will add to make a series. So let's see what numbers we're really adding. Um, 8 minus 2 times 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. All right. 2 times 6 is 12. 8 minus 6 is negative 4. So I'm going to add negative 4 to that. All right. 2 times 7 is 14. 8 minus 14 is negative 6. And maybe you can start to see the pattern. I mean, this is an arithmetic sequence. I keep losing 2 every time out because I have this minus 2k here. So I can see this next one here would be negative 8. I would add to it here negative 10. And then this last one would be negative 12. I'm going to stop because I only have six terms. I have the k equals fifth term, k equals 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, and then let's see what we get here. So I'm going to go over to my calculator and start plugging this in. We got negative 2 minus 4, 6, 8, 10, and finally minus 12. We are looking at negative 42. So this entire summation is equal to negative 42. Okay. Now your calculator can help you with this. So I'm going to show you how this will work. I'll give you. Uh, let, let's do it initially. I'm going to. I'm going to flip over to my computer, and I'm going to do the example I have written below, and then I'm going to come back to this, and I'll show you how we can just check our answers with this 260 and this negative 42. So give me a moment, I'm gonna flip over to my computer, show you how you can use summation notation in your calculator, and then we'll flip back. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, welcome to the calculator part of section, or example one. I wanna show you how you can use summation notation on your calculators, or at least how you can manipulate your calculators into using summation notation so you can check your answers. So we have a, a quick little series here. I'm going to add the first five terms of the sequence, j squared plus j plus 1. And the reason I say add the first five terms is because if you look at my lower limit of summation, right, we've got j equaling 1, and I'm going to go up to this upper limit of 5, so it's the first five terms. Because that's all a series is. A series is taking your sequence and adding those terms together, right? So in 9, 1 through 9, 3, where we're making lists of numbers, now we're adding those lists. So here is the fifth partial sum of this sequence. So again, starting j equaling 1, if I substitute 1 into that sequence expression, I would get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, which you see right here, there's the first term in my sequence. I'm going to add to it the second term in my sequence. Well, if j is 2, this is 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. You can see that term in the sequence there. But again, because it's a series, I'm going to add, right, I'm going to add the third, fourth and fifth terms. And if you crunch those numbers out, they're going to turn into 3 plus 7 plus 13, 21, 31. When I add the first five terms of my sequence, I get the series adding up to 75. So this fifth partial sum is called is 75. All right, now, how can I get my calculator to do all of that for me? Well, there's a few calculator commands we're going to have to go through. So go back to your home screen. All right. Oops, and let me go to key press history. Let's see what we got. Let me clear this. Okay. So let's go into our math, or our, excuse me, our list mode. So we're going to hit second in stats here, all right? And then I want you to head over to math. And if you look at option five, there's the sum. So let's hit five, all right? Now, I think some of the newer calculators, when you hit sum on your calculator, it will actually show this symbol. All right, so it'll look like a sigma. I don't have that calculator. If you've got the new fancy ones, good for you, all right? But this is what the old school one looks like. All right, now, whenever you want to take a series, if you want to build to a series, you need to sum the terms of a sequence. And we talked way back in 9.1 how to get to the sequence um, menu item. So hit second and stat again, but instead of going all the way to the right to math, stop at ops. All right, so we're just going to go to ops and hit five. All right, so let me, let me clear all this out and just rerun this for you so you can see it, okay? So let me clear. All right. And here we go. Second stat, go to math, option five. Second stat, go to ops, option five. All right. And then enter in your sequence the same way we did in 9.1. 
So in this case, I'm going to enter in, instead of j squared plus j plus 1, I'll use my variable. Um, I can see because the n is showing up, I'm still in sequence mode, which is fine. All right. If you're not in sequence mode, if for some reason you're back in function mode, you'll have x's popping up there. But it doesn't matter what the letter is. As long as you're, you're um, telling your calculator, this is my variable, I'm going to say n is my variable, right? Comma n, or if you're in function mode, you'll put comma x. You're going to be fine. All right. And then you need to tell your calculator the lower limit to your upper limit, separated by commas, close that out, hit enter, there's 75. All right, now let me rerun this, but let me change my mode, just in case you guys are in function mode. So if I go back to mode and I change myself into function mode, I'm going to rerun this entire thing. Let me clear this out, clear this out, but let's go from scratch. All right, here we go. Second stat, go to math, option five. Second stat, go to ops, option five. Type in your sequence. So in this case, it was j squared plus j plus 1. My calculator is going to see the letter x. I'm going to tell my calculator x is my variable. I'm going to go from 1 to 5. Close that out. Hit enter. And there it is. All right. So I'm going to flip back to my handwritten lecture. And we're going to check the calculator commands against the series that we looked at in example 1. All right. I'll see you in a few. Bye. Hey Mount 31, now that we have that under our belt, let's just practice with what we've got here. So I've got my calculator on. Let me just check that the sum of 5i minus 10, at least from i equaling 5 to 12, is 2, 260. So we're going to hit second stat, go to math, option 5. Hit second stat again, this time go to oops, ops, option 5. And then you want to tell it your sequence, which in this case was 5i minus 10. I'll use my x button. I need to specify that the variable was x, or i, if you're doing it by hand, but it's x on your calculator. And then I want to go from 5 to 12. Close those parentheses, and let's see. I'm hoping 260. It's looking good, right? I've verified my work. All right. Let's check part b. So let's run through these calculator commands again. All right, so I hit second stat. Go to math, option 5. Second stat, go to ops, option 5. Punch in your sequence, tell your variable or tell your calculator the variable is x. Lower limit of summation, upper limit of summation, close that parentheses, and sure enough, I'm getting negative 42, so I'm feeling pretty good about my, my answers. All right, so with that, that's your first look at summation notation. We're going to flip to the next example and we're going to start to look at arithmetic series. All right, so we're, we're adding the terms of an arithmetic sequence. And we're going to pick up two formulas that can only be applied when you're looking at arithmetic series. All right, I will see you in a bit, gang. Bye.